this is superior cerebral artery this is posterior cerebral artery this is for cerebellum that is for posterior part of cerebrum right superior cerebral originate right it is moving under the third nerve and superior posterior cerebral is above the third nerve am i clear no problem up to this right okay now i will draw it rapidly and you will tell me what i'm drawing so that i become sure that you really understood it or not i will see you can speak more rapidly you have to speak loudly or i can draw more rapidly right let's have a competition here as i will draw the structures you have to name them just right yes 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 please what happened <laughs> vertebral artery you you think this is vertebral artery <laughs> okay okay let's come here yes vertebral yes yes posterior posterior cerebral okay now your test will come yes anterior and yeah posterior spinal okay and pica right that's good and is it ica yeah labyrinthine and now ica okay and pontine that's good and superior and what is this okay now one more way i want to see your imagination i know your imagination is very good in some specific things let's talk about your imagination about the arteries right first of all i will draw the brain stem here yeah first i will tell what are these structures this is the midbrain pons medulla spinal cord is that right clear now you have to tell the arteries vertebral fusing posterior cerebral good now anterior spinal from the vertebral pica and from basilar ica and from basilar long distance labyrinthine then small branches from basilar and then from the basilar branches going to the cerebellum again just the final let's have a competition of speed right <laughs> listen posterior cerebral okay okay that's good i think this topic is so easy it should not be taught isn't it no <laughs> it should not be taught any more <laughs> right okay i'm so happy that you know about vertebro basilar system now let's talk about carotid system and then we'll connect the system to make a circle right let's have a break first now we will be discussing about the carotid system which supplies the brain with the blood supply right or we call it anterior blood supply system now carotid system you, as we discussed in the beginning of the lecture that this is the internal carotid arteries which are going to supply the cerebral hemispheres right so let's see that how the internal carotid arteries enter into cranial cavity and what are the important branches they are given right so let me make a view do you recognize this structure okay 
So from here we will Can you tell me what is this big foramen? Thank you. What passes through it? Yeah? Please tell me spinal cord first. <laughs> of course, vertebral arteries pass through that, but spinal cord is the first thing. And of course, don't mention esophagus. It does not pass it from here. <laughs> now, no, it is important to tell students. Sometimes students are confused. They think there is a very big foramen. There must be esophagus there. Right? So it is both spinal cord and vertebral artery and another very important structure from down going up through this. Spinal part of, portion of, 11th cranial nerve. Anyway, leave it, it's behind. Now we are going to concentrate on some other area and this area is anterior cranial fossa. What is this? Middle cranial fossa and what is it? Posterior cranial fossa, right? And we have to develop that how the internal carotid artery comes there. Already you know that it's a very small branch. Yeah, this is from subclavian system, external carotid. And what is this going on? Internal carotid. Internal carotid, as it moves upward, it enters through a canal here. And in this canal, Someone is going to tell me all these structures. Right. There is a canal here, right, at the under surface of the base of the cranial cavity, cranial cranium, right from here. The what is this artery? Internal carotid, carotid artery it enters through this canal, which is called which canal? Carotid. carotid canal. And then through the carotid canal it enters and it comes out through through. Oh my God. No. <laughs> okay, listen, this is carotid canal through which it enters and this is foramen lacerum. Don't you look, it is lacerated. I made it like jagged edges. Now you should remember this is lacerated foramen. Foramen lacerum. Actually, there's a funny thing. It enters through the carotid canal, but carotid canal has opening on the under surface, but does not have opening into, into middle cranial fossa. Actually, carotid canal moves upward and then moves forward and uh, goes into foramen lacerum. And from there, this artery turns up. What is this artery? And then it will exit from foramen lacerum. That's great. When it will exit from foramen lacerum, now where it has reached? Middle cranial fossa. And in the middle cranial fossa, here there is a dural venous sinuses. What is this venous sinus? Cavernous sinus, that's great. In the cavernous sinus, it moves forward and then from here it turns upward. Now, the point which I want to highlight is that listen carefully it's very important to understand it that internal carotid artery start from the common carotid artery where common carotid artery divides into external carotid and internal carotid usually there's a dilation dilation here which is called carotid sinus, sinus. not cavernous sinus dilation here is carotid sinus carotid sinus right now internal carotid artery moves upward it comes just under the middle canal fossa, it enters into carotid canal, first upward, then moves forward, and interior part of carotid canal is opened in the foramen lacerum. Through the foramen lacerum, this moves upward, and as it pierces the dura mater, it finds itself into cavernous sinus. sinus. In the cavernous sinus, it moves upward, and uh, here is a interior clinoid process. Right, just medial to that, it moves upward and pierces the dura mater again. And now it is present where? 